Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unzan Chitta. This is going to be a little different this week in that we're going to have a, a Zen game show. Sort of. I'm going to pose some questions and I would like as many of you as care to, um, to answer them. And I didn't say what the subject matter was going to be because I didn't want to have anybody thinking about it too much, except I told uh, Bryant that it was going to be about the Pythagorean theorem. So fair enough. I know all the angles. Yes, yes, we, <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's not That's start rare. down the pun road immediately. So here's the scenario. Someone walks into the Zen center, the Dharma room, the meditation room for the first time. You've, you've never met them before. You have no idea if they've practiced before. You have no idea if they have a teacher, if they came from another Sangha, whether they're just coming in off the street. So someone comes in and they say to you, I'm interested in Buddhism and I'd like you to be able to tell me uh, what Zen is. So question one, what is Zen? Anyone care to uh, chime in on that for starters? Total, total newbie comes in, says, what's Zen? I'll chime. Okay. So not getting too abstruse or abstract at first, I would just say simply that Zen is a Japanese word that's based on a Chinese word, which originally was based on an Indian word that means meditation uh, for the most part. And so I would say to the newbie, what we do here primarily is focus on meditation, which means observing your mind, sitting and being still and learning to uh, see how your mind behaves. Okay. I might elaborate, elaborate some more, but that's about as abstract as I would get for the beginner. Uh huh. Okay. And, and I'd throw in the, the the greatest hits, which is oftentimes you can become over time more calm, um, feel more spacious, have um, an easier grip on things. And and suffer a bit less in your in your daily life, but I wouldn't elaborate at the beginning too much on that. Okay. Who's next? I like the answer. I would have said initially, Zen is a practice of mental cultivation. And then I would have said the same thing you had about observing the mind. Okay. Anything more? No. Mr. Rob? Okay. Uh, okay, I see someone <laughs> raising his hand. Minwe, you're up. Uh, I was going to second Bryant's comments, uh, kind of talking about what Zen is as, as, as a derivative of Chan, as a derivative of Jhana. Um, and, you know, so that's what I would do. But I would also probably quote Sung San, um, in which Sung San had stated, um, when Buddhism came to China, it met Taoism. They got married and had a baby and called that Chan or Zen. Uh, and that would be my introduction, that there's more to Zen than just Buddhism. 
Um, but it is a, a marriage of uh, Buddhist ideology and Chinese ideology uh, come together uh, and comes to fruition through our meditation practice. Okay. I have something. Okay, Naga. So it comes from Sanskrit, derived from Sanskrit Tano. And then it's also kind of related to art form, like tea ceremony, painting, art. It's focused into dhyana, doing anything that is artistic also. So if I, if I made a meal with meditative mind, then that's also Zen. Okay. And there's only one left. Briar, do you care to chime in or wait for round two? I didn't realize there was there was a everybody chime in. Um, everyone's done remarkably well. It's jhana. It's a fundamental expression of Buddhist practice through meditation, primarily seated, but as Naga has indicated. Zen practice tends to scope out beyond the seated meditation, though the name doesn't derive from the other practices. It involves meditation in life, in function, in art, in action, in, in all the things, all the postures. Okay. I would add one more thing uh, based on Naga and Briar's refinements and Minwi's. Uh, um, in one sentence, in the Zendo, we cultivate our awareness and our attention. And we bring that from the Zendo outward into all aspects of our life. Okay. <clears throat> so, secular. Okay. So, um, I'll play the part of the noob. Well, can I just like do all that by myself? I mean, do I need to know any Buddhism at all? Do I, why am, why am I bothering to be here if, if that's what you do? I can look at my mind all by myself. And I would answer you bothering to, you. to be here. And I would uh, answer to you, yes, you could, but do you? And if you take a cold, hard look, most of us think that we can and know that we can, but never do. And so the Zendo and the priests and the fellow practitioners and everything else is a skillful way of reminding us of what our goal is, which is to do this paying attention. Because if we try to do it on our own, a thousand and one things distract us and we'll never get around to it. Okay. Someone else started there. Was that Briar? I would, I would simply turn this back into a question. Then why are you here? Yeah, that's what I said. If that is your, your intent, then why have you come here tonight? <clears throat> um, I would say that we have um, a, a practice that's been a living um, practice in which teachings have been handed from student to teacher for many generations. Um, and that <clears throat> um, in cultivating our uh, in, in mental cultivation, um, it is uh, helpful to understand what direction you need to be pointed in. It's not that that it's a journey it's a more of a journey than a destination, but we it's good to have the compass. We will know that we are doing uh, that we are in sync 
as you will. As you can see, it's very hard to explain these things. <laughs> and that's why I didn't want anybody rehearsing. Um, so one other thought, um, I would also explain that in Buddhism, there's something called the three jewels, which are generally taken to be the most important things we try to focus on. And one of those three is the group or the Sangha or the people that you are with who are like-minded and similarly uh, um, of similar mind. And the way human beings are, whether Buddhism or not, we all uh, follow social leads. And when a group is doing something, it is much easier uh, to do that thing than to constantly remind ourselves and to force ourselves when we're just on our own. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah. go ahead, Naga. Because um, I was going to bring the Sangha too, because we are like social beings, we need to rely upon each other. When somebody needs a little more guidance or somebody needs a care, I think creating Sangha is the best thing for the whole networking. Okay. Three jewels is very important. Um, all right, so putting the noob's hat back on, I'm trying to make heads or tails out of all this. So the next question they might say is, well, so how exactly do you do this? I read uh, a couple articles on mindfulness. Is, is that what this is? Uh, what, what exactly do you do? How do you do it? How do you do these things that you're talking about? We do them by doing them and not talking about them or reading about them. Reading and studying and knowing are completely different from experiencing. And what happens in Buddhist practice is we focus on the experience of our mind and our body and our feelings and emotions and the whole works, but we don't theorize about it. We just focus on the experience of it and becoming more familiar. As Ron said, we cultivate our, our minds and our familiarity with our minds, which you're never gonna get in a book because your mind does not exist in any book. A common metaphor, of course, is the one of dust on the mirror, right, Bryant? So <clears throat> our minds and the nature, the pure nature of our mind and our being, what we essentially are, is obscured by the conditioning of our upbringing and the mental ruts uh, of our discursive minds. And that we learn rather than identify with the ripple to be the stillness of the water, um, to mix another metaphor in, and to cultivate that stillness and thereby allow our essential nature, as it will, to illuminate itself. Uh, I mean, I don't know if that's how a teacher would initially speak right. to a student, but in the, in the Zendo, of course, you would probably instruct the student on how to sit yes. um, and how the breath is used and how by initially counting to 10 on the out breaths and so forth, that uh, you learn to still the mind. Okay, so... I'm, I'm getting more of an idea, but how exactly do you do this thing? Briar, you were going to jump in there? 
Ron, Ron was hitting on where I was going, which is at, at, the, at the beginning, you've already read books, so let's skip the theory and sit like this and sit in this posture and breathe like this. And then once we've practiced and we watch each other, then we can talk about the shared experience of the practice and what you're experiencing and how you're feeling and move from there. Beyond that, it's all mental conjecture. Okay. I'm starting to get some sort of an idea. So you meditate in some way or another and you sit a certain way to do it and you breathe in a certain way and, and you count breaths. And so where does that get you? As Brian said before, you watch what follows, what arises, what happens, you watch your mind. Okay. And where that gets you is in your daily life, as you refine your ability to be aware of what your mind is doing moment to moment, you can catch yourself much sooner uh, than ever before. Uh, as you cultivate it more and more, it becomes easier and easier to catch yourself <clears throat> before little things become big things, or you can be aware when you are spinning stories that don't actually exist, or be aware of all the different things that your mind does normally, which you're not aware of, and which cause you suffering. And as you become aware of that, you can see it almost like objectively, and seeing it, somehow, that brings peace. There's a separation from the story. You can see it for what it is. And why is that useful? Because you probably won't get into as many arguments, fights, depressions, etc. The highs might be a little less high, but the lows will probably be a lot less low. You will achieve more equanimity and more sort of an easy feeling over time. Uh, it's not going to eliminate all problems and all emotions. That's not possible. But you will be uh, have an easier time of it. Perhaps the Four Noble Truths would help at this point? I don't know. Tell me. I'm a noob. I know nothing. I, I think we go back to is something that Minwi and I have both said, why are you here? We, we turn that around to the newbie because they obviously have an impression or a leading or an interest or a curiosity. And if we're beyond this is what Zen is and here's the introduction and here's how you sit Zazen, what is that leading? What has brought you here? What are you trying to find or still yourself in or lose or get rid of? Or were you just walking down the street and said, hey, Zen, I've heard of that. Let me see what they're doing. <laughs> I have that garden back in the house. <laughs> um, well, I want to uh, jump, jump back to something that uh, Bryant said. And this is something that I've heard people say in the past, suffering, I'm not suffering. What do you mean suffering? And I would say that reaction right there is suffering. Defensiveness is suffering. If we're talking about the Four Noble Truths again and Dukkha, I like to use the word un ease because there's a sense of unease in the background of our minds no matter what we acquire or obtain that it's just never enough or it's just not exactly suitable or we fear losing it etc okay right 
quoting Buddha, separation from what we love, not getting what we want, getting what we don't want. How many times has this happened to you? <laughs> and, with, and with Buddhism, you can solve that problem instantaneously through awareness. And 1999 by check or money order. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, we, you're very, very polite raising your hand before. Uh, <laughs> uh, I this. don't want to step on anybody. That's all. Okay. Um, I think, you know, Brian and I have mentioned this kind of why are you here type of attitude. Um, and, you know, we, we might not phrase it like, so what the fuck do you want, dude? But we <laughs> would say, you know, we would say, what, what brings you here? You know, how may I help you? Um, because honestly, look around. No one in America who follows Buddhism, no, no one who is not born into Buddhism follows Buddhism because they're totally satisfied with their own or their old religion. They're seeking something. Maybe they're seeking answers they didn't get before. Maybe... Um, they're trying to let go of something, but they're seeking something. And so, you know, that's why I would say, how can I help you? What are you seeking? What is it you're hoping to, you'll find when you walk through the door here? When my son comes to me and says, daddy, why do you meditate? I tell him plainly, so I'll be a better dad. But if I ask Bryant or Ron, why do you meditate? They may have a whole different reason. And that's okay, because what we seek is wisdom. So that's my approach with the new. What brings you in the door? What is it you're seeking? Something. You're seeking something, or you wouldn't have walked in. So how can I help you? Okay. All right, closing round. You have, let's call it 30 seconds to give your elevator pitch that would that would cover all of those questions what's zen uh how do i do it what do i do it for so go bryant you're always going first so keep it up 30 second <laughs> elevator pitch a prisoner of my karma all right if you are here because you've ever experienced any kind of unease in your life, uh, Buddhism may have some answers for you, uh, primarily because it's a practice, not just a philosophy. And what the practice does is you ingrain certain new habits of awareness and thinking and being and behaving into your muscle memory through repeated practice. And over time, you become more easy in your life, calmer, uh, able to deal with things better, able to focus better, more aware. Um, and most people who have been involved in it for a long time uh, are pretty happy with the fact that they have been. So you'd be in good company. Okay. Uh, Ron, elevator pitch. I would say most of us are responding to programming in our minds that uh, predetermines how we act in certain situations, how we think and how we feel. Um, as a result, we're uneasy. Um, and Zen offers a practice for helping to uh, illuminate the programming in our minds so that we can unbind that programming and become our more authentic self in our essential authentic self we will find uh compassion is its very nature um it is brilliant compassionate and and the source of wisdom okay naga 30 seconds elevator pitch okay i don't know if i have so much um 
I would say to find the truth of yourself and the inner, the inner self, and uh, just to be there for yourself and to the for the others, connecting to the nature right. of the wisdom. Okay, uh, Briar. Zen is a basic and fundamental practice established in Buddhism through meditation and observing the mind through breathing, which has at its very least the ability to help with health, mental health, emotional stability, and improving the quality of life. And at its greatest, who knows, maybe even enlightenment, it costs nothing and you can do it anywhere at any time. In fact, basic life is the practice. Okay, and Minwi, to wrap it up. 30 seconds. <laughs> it can be 20 less. Years ago, okay, less. 20 years ago, um, I witnessed a terrorist bombing in Bali, Indonesia, and fell into a horrible pattern of PTSD. I began meditating and found how to live in the present and how to let go of the past. If you want to learn how to live in the present and let go of the past, let me show you the way. Okay, very good. Thank you all. <laughs>